Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm back on the dock. And as always, I always forget something when I come down here, and this time I forgot my sunglasses. But that's okay, we're gonna get this done. You remember this guy? The big, freaky, hinged, monster swim bait that we've been working on over the past, I don't know, what are we up to, like five parts, six parts on this thing? In the last video, we almost ran out of options and made a couple of modifications, but they didn't really do a whole lot. The swimming action on the lure stayed pretty much on these last two pieces where the tail really moved quite a bit. But the rest really didn't. So it didn't look as natural as I wanted it to. I wanted a little more of a full body kind of undulation in the swim. And I went back to the shop and I thought about it and I thought about it and came up with the solution. Okay, so we're back in the shop and all these calculations are sort of history. So first, I wanna kind of walk you back to where we've been, what we've done and why we did all this stuff. Uh, first of all, thank you for everybody who's uh, sort of given a lot of comment and attention to this. I've gotten a lot of uh, good suggestions. A Couple of things I have to say is that this was an exercise in design. Uh, the idea was to make it difficult. So I had a lot of people who offered suggestions like, hey, why don't you make the swim bait like so-and-so makes it? Or why don't you do it with V-joints? Or uh, those kinds of things. And really, I, I got probably eight or nine different versions of really good swim baits that I've made. It's not that I don't know how to make a good swim bait. It's that I wanted to so, sort of push the envelope on design. And the reason is so that I can kind of take you guys for that ride and kind of show you how you can use the principles of physics and hydrodynamics, fluid flow, and do it in a way that's, that's really accessible and that you can intuit and you don't have to do a bunch of crazy research. So I started off with an idea of doing a lure that was sort of out there. Uh, first of all, uh, carving it directly from two-part casting resin. Uh, the next kind of oddball thing was to make it just a little bigger than normal. It's about seven and a half inches long. And then to have it have four segments, which is a little more than normal. And then the crazy joints, right? The two pin joints that allowed it to sort of fold onto itself like a deck of cards. Remember this? And all those elements created a lure that really was sort of a giant question mark. Really didn't know what it was gonna do. I used all the basic principles to make sure that it was gonna be stable. Remember my goal that I stated, I wanted it to be stable. I wanted it to swim with a nice natural undulation uh, that was full body, right? And I wanted it to be stable at any speed. I wanted it to swim really well fast and really well slow. I wanted it to sink sort of moderately slow and I wanted it to have that sort of crazy range of motion. So that the very first time we put it in the water, it was obvious that it was a very odd lure. Only the back two sections would move and it looked as if the head and the second section was were glued together. And if you remember, my first instinct was, oh, maybe we have a little too much friction in those hinges up front, let's go loosen them up. So I did that, I sanded back the slots, we loosened them up, took them in, into the water again, and it changed it a little bit, but not enough to make any real difference. The next experiment was to see if maybe because those back segments were moving so freely, they weren't allowing enough energy to be dissipated in the front segments. So everything, all the turbulence was going to the tail and that was the only thing moving. So the next theory was to try to kind of restrain the tail a little bit and get that movement forward. So I decided I was gonna to try to add some drag to the tail. So the first thing I did was to clip on uh, a couple of really heavily obnoxious looking uh, treble hooks that have a lot of feathers on them and use that as drag. And it made a, just a minute difference. It did get that head to wobble every now and then, but uh, it wasn't enough. But I, I at least knew that I was kind of on the right track. So the next thing we did was to add a tail fin on the back and I made this plastic one and we put it on there and the hopes was that this would restrain the tail so much that it would definitely push motion forward to the front sections. It didn't work at all. In fact, it killed the motion in the tail and then the only thing moving was that third segment and it was just wobbling around sideways and every which way. 
really not helping much. I had kind of resigned myself to thinking, well, it doesn't swim bad. It actually looks kind of cool in the water. But in the interim, I can't let this stuff go. I started to think about what was really going on. So I think we were on the right track in that uh, the, the back of the lure was much too efficient in getting rid of all that energy. And the, the front was essentially not getting any benefit from that movement at all. It wasn't translating any of that movement. And because there's so much movement in this double pin system, whatever little bit of turbulence was in the front section was being taken care of with just the slightest little movement that was barely perceptible. For all that turbulence, all those vortices, all of them translated all the way to the back. Those two last sections were just going wild. The problem wasn't the shape because it wants to swim and it wasn't the size because uh, we had it properly balanced. It sat in the water good, it, uh, it sank properly. The problem was that there was just a little too much uh, range of motion. So I didn't want to sacrifice the range of motion completely, but I wanted to translate that uh, energy forward. And so what I came up with, leave those hinge plates as I had originally designed them with pins going through them, right? But instead of having all the pins functional, I only wanted the downstream pins functional. So in other words, what I did was I took the slot and I filled it in with resin. And I did that on all the upstream slots. You can see that that one is filled in right there, these two right there, and then the two on the head are filled in and locked in place. The pin is still in it, so there's no way for this thing to come out, but the range of motion has been cut a little, but not too much. It'll still roll over 360 degrees onto itself. That's a lot of range of motion. It still has a really fluid movement, as you can see. So here's why it works. What you have here in this hinge plate is essentially a lever arm extending out about five eighths of an inch, almost three quarters of an inch actually. And when this moves, it wants to shove on that and it has all this leverage to do so. So you end up with this big cheater bar wanting to move the lure and all that movement from the tail all the way up to the mid body and then all the way to the head gets translated. And then the body moves absolutely fluidly. And even with that fluke tail on there, with that plastic fin, it actually still looks really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some shots of it swimming in the water. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get in the boat and we'll get some underwater shots. And just to show you how solid the swim action is, I'm gonna put this tail fin on here just to show you, even with this, it still swims really well. And it doesn't matter how slow or how fast. So I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm ready to do a finish on this. I'm going to foil it and I'm going to put foil scales on it. I'm going to try to make it look as interesting as possible and get a really cool paint job on it. Get a bunch of clear coats on it. Get ready for some toothy fish and then we'll see what I do with it. 
Thank you for watching. Thanks for all the comments. And if you're enjoying this stuff, certainly subscribe. And if you've got buddies who might enjoy it, certainly uh, share it with them. Help me build the channel, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks a lot.